Hello and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with My Security Media. Today we cross to Singapore with Juan Yuan. She's a cyber fraud analyst with Fraud Protection APAC with Group IB. Juan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your invitation. Now, this follows a blog that you wrote. Uh, we're going to be talking about deep fakes and some of the techniques that are being used. Uh, some very interesting sort of case examples that you've been able to sort of highlight uh, within your recent uh, reports. But I think this session will just focus on some of the techniques that are being used. Uh, definitely some AI generated photos to, to create accounts and those kind of things. Um, but we're also talking about, uh, you know, fake audio, fake other sort of digital content uh, and the like. Maybe let's start with your role as a cyber fraud analyst. Uh, what type of techniques you specifically look at and what type of data sets that you might look at? Uh, and then we'll sort of move into sort of broader uh, observations that you've been having. Sure. Hi, my name is Ryong Huang, I'm a cyber front analyst at a Group IB Front Protection. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. So uh, my key role is to help our clients to analyzing uh, their data, to analyzing uh, if any you know suspicious sessions or you know behavior happened uh, when they're using our uh, front protection solution. So I will help them to investigate the front and help them to build some new events to protect their system, protect uh, yeah their users from fronts. That's my key role. Got it. Maybe talk us through the uh, the, the fraud detection solution. What specifically? How is that applied? Uh, so for front protection solution, we we are session based uh, solution. So we were analyzing uh, users' device environment and their behavior to detect if there or to flag if there are some you know uh, suspicious behavior. For example, we can analyzing their uh, device environment if they are using you know some VPN or if there are any malware detected or bot activity, and we also analyzing their you know behavior. For example, if their account takeover happened, we may detect their you know like typing uh, patterns are different from usual based on our uh, yeah machine learning events. So we just analyzing all the you know uh, data right. to flag any you know abnormal things. Yeah. So this is an opt-in from the financial institutions. They give you a data feed and you're sort of looking for anomalies uh, within that data sets, uh, both from the user level and the account level. Would that be about right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we analyzing the data, uh, we find something very suspicious. We will send uh, events to our clients or we directly, you know, contact them. Like uh, we wanted them to analyzing uh, like transaction level because we don't uh, we don't we don't uh, check transaction perspective data. So what are we gonna do is we analyzing session um, data to see if they're abnormal, and we contact our clients to ask them to check if their front end behavior happened or transaction happened from you know transaction uh, perspective, and they will uh, you know check from their side and let us know what happened and if they need our help to build something new, like new events to help detect similar behavior or, you know, other, you know, like uh, assistance, we are open to help that. Okay. Well, we'll have a link to your blog in the, in the, in the post uh, show notes, but maybe just talk us through some case examples. We're talking about financial institutional data uh, and the like, but yeah, just some of the observations there, uh, whether they're, new clients or current clients, uh, yeah, some of the sort of attack methodologies that you're seeing. Yeah, exactly. So if we come back to uh, specific this case, like deep fake cases, it starts from, you know, uh, we analyzing uh, the uh, accounts related to the uh, device relationship. We find that there is one device generally for normal users. They may have one device and one uh, account, right? But we found that there is one device uh, linked with more than 100, you know, uh, accounts. It's very suspicious. So we contact our, you know, clients, ask them to check if there any, you know, uh, something wrong uh, happened. At first, actually, we suspected maybe money mu, but um, our clients um, told us actually it's deep fake. So they seek our help to further investigate this case. They provide some uh, information from their side and. Uh, when we realize it's deepfake, actually we quite, you know, like 
I can't say excited, but actually I'm a little bit excited at that moment because for me, you know, as L, it's, I really interested to, you know, new cases. Yeah. So uh, we start uh, the investigation and we find a lot of new things, a lot of um, new cases, like uh, deep fake cases. So for this client, we detect over 1000 deep fake cases and we use the, uh, like analyzing results or the investigation results to invest and uh, to like enhance our current system to help more of our clients uh, to detect deep fake. Yeah, that's how it started. And given your role, you're cyber fraud. So it's not, we're not talking necessarily cyber security here where, you know, it's an attack on a network. This is a, a fraud perpetrated by using deep fake technologies. And then on, in this case, it sounded like they're using uh, deep AI generated photos. Um, it sounds like almost a business email compromise, the old, but it's a new form of, of that. Uh, how, 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 how many, many other cases are you finding here, particularly for fraud? Uh, we had, you know, we are hearing about frauds perpetrated using deep fakes, whether it's a CEO calling up the accountant and uh, they're using a deep fake audio of the CEO, but now they're, they're trying to create accounts, trying to get loans, uh, using false identities and false uh, images. How broad is this? We've, we've mentioned an Indonesian client. Are you seeing this across the region uh, as well? So uh, that's a really good question. Uh, so far, I, I cannot tell you, uh, like apart from Indonesia, any other uh, regions we detect deep fake. Uh, sorry, cannot tell right now. Uh, but we, what we want to highlight it is uh, exactly that's why we want to highlight the, the impact of deep, deep fake. So you mentioned they may impersonate employees or some executives from the you know business perspective to you know gain some privilege access to some um, confidential. Uh, data. So uh, yeah, for for this case uh, in my blog, I mentioned is um, the fraudsters they using you know AI generated or yeah AI generated uh, photo videos to bypass um, banking's digital uh, KYC process and to register new account and apply uh, apply for law. So that's how this how they got money. How they you know. Uh, conduct this kind of uh, fraudulent um, behavior. It's at times, but uh, it caused a lot of, you know, like uh, threats to the whole society and uh, whole, you know, financial industry, I, I suppose. Well, it's definitely a challenge for financial institutions. Again, they have, yeah, they have exactly. very, very robust KYCs. The other one uh, that uh, here is app cloning, where they can clone someone's application or device even, I, I imagine, uh, and then, uh, Sort of put themselves forward as that particular device uh, to access an account. Um, how how easy is this detection possible? You know, given that they've created so many accounts or so many attacks, uh, how easy is it to generate? I suppose that's one question. I already know the answer in, in my mind, but how sophisticated do you think the the attackers need to be, or the fraudsters need to be? These tools are readily available. They just need, really need to apply themselves. But how much skill level do you see within the methodology? That's really good questions. Um, actually, uh, for app cloning, uh, so let's um, clarify a little bit. So for iOS, actually, app cloning is quite hard um, to you know uh, use. But for Android, we act, we exactly detect. Um, you know, certain amount of uh, app cloning tours. And fraudsters can gain a lot of advantages of using such tours. They can duplicate, for example, a um, back mobile um, application on one physical device. They can duplicate a lot of, copy a lot of um, bank, uh, yeah, mobile application, and they can run them at the same time. So it will save them a lot of time. They can just do that, you know, like on one physical device. So, um, that's for app cloning. For app cloning, actually, is uh, I can't say it's easy, but uh, it's like um, quite scalable, especially for Android devices. But for other techniques, for example, for um, uh, virtual camera injection techniques or tours, it's not that much easy, actually. Right. It's, really quite that's other, it's almost that perfect storm. As the devices get more powerful, they become sort of as you say, uh, able to, to clone and to be, become more sophisticated in their own right. 
So this problem's only going to get worse. One of the reasons I wanted to, to do this interview, and this is our last interview for 2024, is there's a lot of predictions for 2025 and beyond around AI, and I think uh, AI is always a double-edged sword. So fraud and cyber attacks uh, using AI tool sets uh, are going to become a lot more prominent. Um, and one last uh, thing, Juan, the other reason we wanted to talk to Group IB, we had your sponsorship this year for our Women in Security ASEAN Region Awards, and so I wanted to recognise that. Uh, you weren't a finalist, unfortunately, but other, about three others of your team were. How did you get into cyber fraud, being a, a cyber fraud analyst, uh, and how are you finding the, the role? Uh, how did you how did you get into working with Group IB? Uh, that's a really um, good question. Actually, uh, I didn't come from um, like cybersecurity background. I come from a bioinformatics background. Uh, so how I start my role at Group IB as a cyber front analyst, actually, it start, I joined this company uh, last summer. So in total, actually, I was already in this company for more than one year and seven months. And it happens during my, you know, school, your know, campus career fair. I, I still like master student at National University of Singapore. So I, I just work around and trying to find, um, you know, a data related job because I'm uh, majoring in bioinformatics. My key role, my key uh, skills is data analyzing, machine learning, yeah, something like that. So I trying to find uh, like. The suitable, uh, you know, position. So when I was in that, when I was in the uh, uh, campus career fair, I see my current manager. So we have uh, like a discussion. We share. I share him my, you know, like uh, opinions about the data, about um, cybersecurity, and actually, I was very hesitant because it's not my background, right? But um, I very appreciate he encouraged me encouraged to give it a try. So yeah, then I gave it a try. I started internship in this company last summer and I did a nerd a lot. So every day for me, just like a really, you know, fresh, exciting day. And I really enjoy my time here. I can see like a lot of, you know, like growth I I have made. So yeah, that's, that's how I start this uh, place. Well, uh, that's one, it's good to hear. And two, I think you're in the right role uh, given uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, the predictions that this is only going to become more of a problem uh, and the reliance on AI and machine learning as a machine, basically a data scientist, uh, you're definitely in at the front seat and at the forefront. And I will also say it's a very impressive blog. I read it, you know, I get sent a lot of blogs. Thank you. Uh, but I think the way that this is laid out and the data sets uh, for the audience is well worth having a look uh, and you will uh, take a lot away, particularly if you're in the banking and financial sectors uh, in particular or you're interested in deep fakes and what's happening uh, in that domain. Juan Yuan, a cyber fraud analyst, fraud protection with APAC with Group IB. Thank you so much for joining us on My Security TV there from Singapore, our last interview for 2024, and we'll see you in 2025. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for your invitation.